Welcome back to the NFL Players Podcast. I'm Zach Miller. This week, we're going to talk about free agency. It's going to be starting in three weeks here, so you're already seeing teams get ahead of the situation, releasing some veterans. Um, obviously, a tough time for those guys. I've, I've been in, in that situation um, when I was, uh, you know, my last year in Seattle, uh, I had the ankle injury, and I, I you know... You kind of expect it coming. Uh, I had a roster bonus due early in the league year, and so uh, uh, John Schneider, Pete Carroll, you know, they give you the call a couple days before it's due because they have to make a decision on whether to keep the player. Is it worth it? Um, is it you know what's their injury history? What's their you know how old are they getting? Um, you know, all the the teams are making those decisions right right as we speak, and so you've already seen some marquee veterans be released. There'll be a lot more over the next couple weeks here. And um, that's all triggered, uh, you know, by by either roster bonuses or just teams trying to shed shed players for cap space. And so we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, free you know free agency, the process, what what the different terms are, what matters, uh, how you can get to free agency effectively, and actually earn the compensation you deserve. And 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 you know that's such an important important part of of being able to make it to free agency is staying healthy enough, staying you know. So, you know, being able to perform at such a high level that you can, you know, become a free agent uh, when when you're at the top of your game, and and that matters for long term contracts. That matters for for how much you get per season, and and really earning, you know, what your what your true potential is. And uh, before we talk about that a little bit, um, you know, just a pro tip here. Uh, you know, if you if you're listening to this podcast. Turn it at one and a half times speed when you're listening. Um, you know you can really burn through a lot of a lot of podcasts and get a lot of information. and And it's how I listen to podcasts. It's how I listen to audiobooks uh, on Audible or, or or really anything that can be sped up. YouTube videos you can speed those up too. So that's just my uh, my my pro off topic pro tip of the day. Um, and so let's let's talk about the salary cap. So obviously, uh, with with coronavirus, the cap has come down significantly uh, for this upcoming league year. Uh, last year, I think it was around 196 million, um, maybe 198 million. Um, it's going to drop down to 183 million, and then they're expecting, or at least everything I've seen, is it going to really jump back up because they're expecting a you know next the, the 2022 league year because they're expecting all those stadiums to be filled back up. I'm, I'm seeing projections like 90 to 95% capacity for the fall upcoming here. Um, really, really going to, going to be good down the road for the NFL. But for this season, you're going to see a lot of, you're going to see a lot of uh, general managers and team owners talking about the the salary cap and having to release veterans um, that are good players that they're, they're just going to say, because, because of the cap, they had to let them go. And so, uh, you know, uh, there's always uh there's always um a tough part about that because you you know you know you you're constrained by that salary cap and then you always know that the teams can can extend they can take uh they can take bonus money you know to defer out that that cap number into the future if if they really want to keep that player so um hopefully Hopefully, no, no, you know, no, no listeners are in that situation. But being in that situation myself um, and getting that that uh, call from from the owner or the or the GM is 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 a tough day. And so the sooner you can, you know, get start getting other teams interested once once you're out there in the free agency market, um, you know, I truly believe that that getting to free agency should should be every NFL player's goal. You know, some teams will lock you up earlier, but I think that it's. It's an awesome experience. I got to be a, a free agency in 2011, and and it was a it was a lockout shortened off season. But just the fact that teams get to compete for you, you get to see your true value, you get to pick where you where you're going to play. I think that's uh, something that every player should get to experience. Uh, every NFL guy should get that opportunity. And uh, you know, if you really look at all the free agency rules, they're really designed to restrict player movement and res- and lower player compensation. Um, whether it's a franchise tag, the transition tag, um, exclusive rights, restricted free agency, all those things are designed to restrict player movement. Movement. So, anytime a player can get to free agency, I think is is awesome for the player, and it lets you kind of pick the situation you want to be in, pick pick the team and, and culture you want to 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 join. And I think that's um, definitely a goal every player should have. 
Um, so just, just to talk about some of those terms, an accrued season in free agency means that you have played six games. Um, so once you have four accrued seasons, you can become an unrestricted free agent. If you only have three, then you're restricted free agent. And if you have less than three, you're exclusive rights. So those are just important things. An accrued season is different than accredited season. Accredited season is for your NFL benefits. And you'll, uh, you only need three games for that one. So the accrued season, six games, and, and it's, um, Earning those and getting uh, closer to free agency is, is, is huge for players, and uh, and so it's just something to, to to really know as a player, and and then know you know what the franchise tag is, what the transition tag is. They obviously get a lot of he- headlines, and and you see you know teams use the franchise tag and 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 to really keep you know those marquee players from leaving their team, and it's only a one year deal. Um, it's it's you know, pretty good money for a one-year deal, but it it lacks the security and the guarantees of a long-term deal that has, you know, skill cap and injury guarantees in it. So, um, you know, and I was actually talking with an agent uh, last week on, on, you know, guarantees and how there's, in the NFL, there's really very few guarantees out there for NFL players. And, and it's, it's too bad because, the teams that are giving out guarantees um, should know that that player would play out that contract to his best of ability and as hard as he could because those are the type of players that you should be giving long-term contracts to. You shouldn't be worried that you have to, you know, the, the guy won't put out uh, the, the maximum amount of effort because, um, you know, all the players I've seen that get, you know, long-term deals – um, that, that, uh, you know, guaranteed, not guaranteed the, the right kind of guys you want on your team as leaders and as, um, football players, they're the ones that, you know, they would play to the best of their ability because that's what they're intrinsically motivated to do. And they don't, they're not motivated by the money just to, just to keep playing. So, um, you know, I still, still can't understand why more NFL teams don't give out guaranteed contracts because it's the type of players that you give those to should be the ones um, that you want to build the foundation of your team on. Um, For, for this cap year that's coming up. um, One thing I will say on that is that it's, um, it's probably not a bad year for, for any free agent that if you're not getting those deals that you want uh, to really look at playing a one year deal and waiting for the cap to go back up next year um, and really bet on yourself and, and how you do that effectively is, is you use all the type of protection you can give yourself. It's whether it's a disability policy with a loss of value, protecting in case there's some type of catastrophic injury. Um, you know, you, you, those are things that, that, if you do take a one-year deal are are kind of no-brainers to protect the downside so you can go play for that long-term free agency deal that that you deserve um, in in a normal cap year like like 2022 will be Um, and then you know one more important thing to note I will say is um, you hear around this time of year that, that a lot of guys you know they're they're unhappy with their agent or they're um, you know, the agent gets them a deal, but it's, it's not, there's only a few agents that really justify their 3% fee. It's, it's actually your play on the field, how good of a football player you are, how, you know, how much you take care of business off the field, how much of a leader you are, what kind of example you set for the younger players. Those are the, those are the guys that drive the free agency value. And you will see that, you know, in three weeks when free agency starts, you will see, um, you know, the teams with, with the best front offices end up finding those players with those intangibles with those that on the field performance and constant improvement and desire to win those are the guys that 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 get the long term deals but then also um you know play out those long term deals and and you know establish themselves as as you know future either hall of famers or you know just long time NFL players and then one more thing I'll mention is just my my story of, of becoming an unrestricted free agent, I, w- I played out my entire rookie contract in Oakland. I was a leading receiver for three years there um, before becoming a free agent and then even um, made the Pro Bowl um, my last year before becoming a free agent. And, and, uh, w- and another thing about that is, uh, you know, they tell you like, yeah, 
you know, play out, play out your rookie deal, play out your, your, your contract because you signed it. Um, the, the problem with that is the teams won't honor the other side. They'll, they'll release you, release you, um, before your contract's up. So, so I'll say on that, like you will never make the money back for playing at less than market value. Uh, the teams will say, you know, we'll reward you at the end. We'll reward you at the end. Well, I did that in Oakland and they did not reward me with any long-term deal. Uh, they, you know, weren't there in free agency, like, like I was expecting. And so, you know, I, I got the luxury of becoming a, a, a an unrestricted free agent in the 2011 off season. Um, it happened to be an f- extremely short uh, free agency period just because uh, once the, the new collective bargaining agreement was signed, there was only, I think, like a week before training camp started. And so there was just a really compressed um, free agency period with, uh, you know, no off season. So, you know, going to a new team in Seattle and, and there was just not as much, um, there was no off season activities. So, uh, really a weird off season, but you know, my, with my experience getting a chance to, to fly to Seattle, you know, meet with John Schneider, Pete Carroll, um, you know, <laughs> Pete Carroll actually recruited me coming out of high school and showed up to my practice, uh, before, before my senior season of high school. And, and then, you know, having, you know, talk to him and, and playing against him when he was at SC, when I was at Arizona state, and then, um, you know, having him, you know, have dinner with me the night I flew up into Seattle and then getting to meet, uh, so many of the players and, and do a free agent visit the right way and see the culture and, and, you know, at the time there was no Russell Wilson in Seattle. So as much as you're trying to predict, um, what team, um, you know, is up and coming for this next Super Bowl run, that if you're a free agent and you want to try to join a team for a Super Bowl run, um, you know, it's, it was, it would have been hard to predict how great that defense in Seattle would have been. And then the fact that the next year, uh, after, you know, my second year in Seattle, we would have drafted Russell Wilson and then gone on to win the Super Bowl, you know, in my third season in Seattle. So I will say as a free agent, as much as you're trying to, to, you know, jump on the, uh, the, um, team, headed for the Super Bowl, you know, it's, it's tough to predict, uh, which, which teams are, you know, going to fall in favor and fall out of favor. So, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things is, is, uh, you'll really only have that luxury if you've set yourself up and played long enough to, to take care of your family, you know, you're sacrificing your body for, uh, for money in the NFL. That's, that's just true. You're going to have the effects of football for the rest of your life. So you need to go ahead and make sure you take care of your, your financial, uh, life first and sign the deal you deserve. And then, um, you know, once you're lucky enough and you can give up compensation, um, you know, to play on a contender for the Super Bowl, then, then you can start doing that. But until you've taken care of your business and, and financially, um, you, you know, you really got to try to maximize, uh, your earnings because your career is just so, so short in the NFL. You can't predict injury. You can't predict how long you'll play. You can't predict what system you're going to be in where maybe they just don't throw the ball to you. You know, you, you can't predict things like that. So you got to really, you know, do what you can to protect all the downside because of such short careers. And, and then, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in a situation where you can sign multiple free agent deals, um, you know, you can be more picky about which team you sign. And just another note with Tom Brady, he signed a, a kind of less than market deal with the Patriots uh, with the expectation they're going to bring in offensive weapons for him. Um, and and they don't. They, uh, they, you know, they really didn't give him a lot of help with that sacrifice he took in his contract. So just, uh, you know, some of those things are, are you just you just after watching the NFL, playing in the NFL for so long, you, you start to see and and uh, that's pretty much it for free agency. Uh, obviously, you're going to see tons of news on it in the, la- in the next few weeks. And that's it for free agency. Um, next week, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the draft process and the pro days that are coming up. I've had a chance to work with a couple tight ends um, that are coming up here in the draft. And so there's just so much uh, information out there. And, and uh, the whole draft process is a little weird this year. But looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for joining me. The information in this podcast is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration the listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.